Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I, we have heard some really rather um, touching and heartfelt uh, speeches uh, this evening, um, and I suspect I cannot do justice to some of what we um, have heard. What I will start to say is I am incredibly sceptical about um, the use of cannabis in a recreational sense. Um, but uh, uh, whilst, of course, condemning actually the current policy of criminalisation that we have, I'm sceptical about moving towards a recreational sense yet. But I am very in favour of us moving towards a proper normalised relationship with uh, cannabis and cannabinoids in our health system. And I think actually the cruelty of what happened last year is that we dangled hope mm. in front of lots of people's mm. faces. Um, yeah. Children, of yeah. course, um, uh, who led, uh, and their families who led this campaign, but also many adults that are suffering very long-term pain conditions and other uh, conditions that would be helped by this. And we said, it would be available for you. And then through administrative burden, deliberately or via cock-up, I can't quite tell, we have created a system where the barriers are so high mm. that the drugs are not being prescribed. And part of that problem is that the rescheduling actually hasn't been sufficient. <laughs> The rescheduling hasn't normalised cannabis and cannabinoids to a level of even opiates. It's given these extra conditions that clinicians have to jump through. They have to know that no other um, drug can work. You have to have tried every... I'll have to give way. I, I thank him for giving way. Uh, and and uh, I, I'm very conscious of my constituent, uh, Darren and Danielle Gibson, and their young daughter, Sophie. And I see the minister in his place, by the way, and, and we, we are greatly indebted to him for his cooperation and help. But there, uh, oh, sorry, in the, in the house, not in his place. Sorry. Uh, let's keep it right. Uh, and, and there were many memorable moments in the so fight for Sophie's medication, coming to terms with the differences in Northern Ireland than the mainland, jumping through the hips in Northern Ireland as well, and then liaising with the minister to, to find a way for my constituent to get what she needed in time, being rushed to intensive care. But here's the story, Madam Deputy Speaker. That young girl today is in receipt of medicinal cannabis. Her epileptic fits are reduced down to one per month. She can attend school again. She can be a, 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 and have all the, the recreational things with her, with her young friends at school and in the playground that she never had before. It happens. It can be done. It changes lives. It can be done if it is given to <coughs> patients at the right time and in the right manner. But part of the reason that I think possibly clinicians are nervous about this is that additional um, thresholds have been put on the prescription of, uh, of, um, of these drugs. And that, of course, then, means that there is an extra nervousness. And particularly when it is a new drug, and particularly when you're requiring it to be based on already pre-existing proven evidence. Now, I mentioned earlier on um, around in other uh, life-threatening uh, diseases, such as HIV, but also um, in other times, we have changed and relaxed and modified the rules around testing. And that was not done immediately, I must say. Those of who remember will remember a vociferous campaign from people, particularly in America, but also here in Britain, around the folly of this requirement for pre-existing medical knowledge. And the, the, the shift was to look at harm. What is the harm done to not trial and not uh, implement anything versus what is the harm done of any potential risks? And in this case, actually, we need to employ that kind of sense. And just like then, when actually it wasn't actually clinicians and it wasn't actually government that shifted on this issue, it was the fantastic work of campaigners. We see again how the fantastic work of campaigners, mm. because they themselves um, need the drugs yep. or that family members yep. need the drugs, are having to push this debate. And it is frustrating to some extent that we have not learnt the lessons of previous uh, eras where this issue has been argued out. And in fact, the issue has been won on the side of prescribing 
time and time again. So why this time are we coming on the wrong side of the argument? What is it about cannabis that suddenly sets some kind of alarm bell off in either ministers' heads or civil servants' heads that actually we create a system that isn't particularly uh, conducive to prescribing? Now, we also see a situation which I find absolutely bemusing, where for some reason private prescriptions are acceptable, and others have talked about it, um, I seem to be getting through if people can raise the right amount of money. But our NHS is not able to reflect that. Now, whether that is a uh, consequence of cuts and uh, an NHS that is at breaking point, or whether it is a consequence of um, and, and where, where commissioners don't then want to prescribe these drugs, which would seem strange to me because the cost does not seem too high when I look at the figures, actually. It's cheaper than prescribing some other traditional uh, medicines. Um, so it would seem to me that it's not then an austerity issue that we know is a bigger problem in the NHS, that there is some other hidden problem, hidden force here, that means parents need to raise thousands and thousands of pounds to try and get private prescriptions and self-prescribe. Now, what I want to finish off on is to widen the debate slightly from children, which I think we have focused on um, quite rightly, to some of my constituents who are adults but also are in mm. chronic pain. Yeah. Um, because whilst it's quite right that sometimes uh, through uh, the story of a child we can push mm. this forward issue, actually this could help mm. millions, as we've heard earlier, maybe are self-prescribing already with cannabis. And actually, that is not good for their long-term health. That is not good, actually, for the state of health care. And their doctors trying to uh, provide them holistic and round care can't fully do that if people are having to go off and uh, self-prescribe elsewhere. Um, United Patients Alliance is a very active organisation across the UK, but particularly um, in my constituency. And uh, my constituent, um, uh, one of my constituents, who's a 42-year-old uh, man, in October of six was um, uh, diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome. Um, if he was given conventional uh, medication, he is expected to take 10 millilitres of morphine a day, a huge, um, of oral morphine a day, which is a huge amount. Um, it means that his actual life quality is completely reduced. He is not as cognizant and he's not as able to interact and hold down a job. With, his, um, uh, with the head of pain at St Thomas's Hospital, um, he has discussed moving on to medical cannabis. They have even said that it would be a real possibility, but they believe the hurdles are too high for them to be able to currently prescribe him now. He is now resorted, of course, to having to get medical cannabis from other sources. Of course, to some extent, with his doctor or his um, clinician in complicity about this, creating a network of people having to almost lie and deceive the state. It is a bizarre situation that we end up turning, uh, making people having to do things in, uh, in, in hushed conversations rather than being able to record things properly in medical records. This absurdity must end. We thought it had ended. Now, my view is that the... Um, Schedulisation of all drugs shouldn't be in the Home Office anyway. They should be in the Department of Health. It makes no sense for the scheduling to be anywhere near the Home Office because scheduling should be based on medical evidence. The Home Office should decide on classification, of course. But then, on top of that, the Department of Health needs to make some real moves very quickly to demonstrate that it hasn't just been all hot words and big letdowns. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Ronnie Cowan.